Hey everyone, it's Nick from Nick's Crossing, and I hope you guys are doing well out there. And I did see we have a couple new subscribers. I'd like to welcome you guys to the channel, and if you guys are new to the channel, please subscribe, hit the bell icon, leave a comment uh, if you guys have any comments for what we do here, anything we can improve on, or anything you guys liked or enjoyed. Yeah, please let me know. I'm open to suggestions, and I love to hear what you guys have to say. Uh, today I wanted to film a tutorial. It's going to be a longer tutorial video, because we're going to wire up this console box. This console was actually featured in my last Monday Run Day, which is a new live series I came out with. That's going to be every Monday night at 7 to 9 p.m. unless otherwise. And it's been a great experience. I love hearing from you guys. It was so much fun. We were up here for about two hours talking about trains, running trains, and I panned over and everyone said, wow, this box looks awesome. And I explained that I could do a tutorial and I had a really good response from that. So we're gonna build this box up. I'm gonna show you guys what I did and uh, what I haven't done yet and show you guys how I wire up stuff up in the layout. So just really quick on the front of here, it's very incomplete, but so far I've installed the kill switch on and off switch here. And when it's on, this red light will light up. On top here, I have these two switches here as well as these two. And sorry, it's a um, little shaky. It's on the power cord right now. It is leveled out, so it won't move once it's completed. So up top, I actually wanted to put my town lights, and this will be for the actual city lights that I've installed already. And those are wired in parallel. I'll break that down for you guys. Next to it is another switch that will be here. That will be for my Lionel accessory lights. And what that means is any Lionel accessory, such as my switching tower or the news tower or the news station behind it in this little red roof here, those have light bulbs in them and you wire them up separately from the actual switch or you can wire them with the switch so the light comes on when it's activated. I have done that in the past, but this time I wanna actually use the light in there all the time. If it gets too hot, I can actually swap it out for an LED. But anyways, these two switches down here will be for cutting off two sections of track on the layout. One of them will be right where the milk stall is, where my freight shed, this little spur here. And then up top, where my ice station is, the uh, track there will be also cut off. So I could store either an engine there, or maybe a caboose that I don't want lit up all the time. Be kind of cool to cut off the track. Um, next to that, in this big space here, for you Lionel fans out there, you might recognize one of these. And this is going to go right in the center there, big old Lionel L, right in the middle. But that looked really cool. I have to rewire this. I won't be doing that in this video, but uh, this is pretty simple. Basically, it uses the track power so you can uncouple the train or unload the train, which is your accessory activator, which my track currently is underneath of the CN caboose. So these four cutouts will actually be for intermittent accessories, like activated accessories, such as the Lionel icing station, the signal tower, the thrower will be for the horn or whistle. I have another new stand located somewhere in here that I can swap them out. And this last one will be for the milk station that I built the accessory track for. Right in here, you can see the uh, accessory rail. So that will also be for that. Now the interesting thing about that is that these three will be powered using the accessory power pack. This one will be wired up to the track and the wires are actually hanging down for that. So we don't have to do anything too extensive, just really just wire up the switch. So we're gonna go on to showing you guys how I wired up the town lights first. All my town lights as of now are currently wired up and I had a few problems with them as well. All right guys, so now I'm on top of the box. I removed that one wire, so this thing is not rocking. And it makes a great surface to put the computer on as well while I'm doing the live streams and maybe just do something simple like fill up a smoke unit. Um, I painted it, as you can see, in Lionel colors. Um, the construction of the box is honestly just half inch plywood on top, three quarter inch plywood sheets on the sides. You guys will get a better look once we flip it open to do the work. Really quick, I want to show you guys what I do every time I wire up a project on the layout so you can keep tabs on what you need and how it's going to be cut and where it can be positioned. As you can see, I say Lionel push buttons. So these are my intermittents. This is milk station, ice, signal man, horn. So those are the four on the left side. On off switch, that's my intermittent switch. And those were repositioned around because I wanted the on off switch on the box to be actually on the same side as my MRC transformer here. So that's why I put the switch on that side. 
And as you can see, we go down the list, it switches. So these are like intermittent, so town lights, lino lights. So I labeled everything that needs to go under, give or take a few words, uh, block track loop. So really this should have been switches one and four, or sorry, three and four here. And then underneath it, I wrote MTH station, maybe inactive. So that is part of my freight shed that I just bought. And that takes a whole different switch. If I can get to it in my drawer, I'll show you guys. I don't know why MTH would wire this up like this. This is a mess. But this is for that freight station. And this is really ugly. I'm not really one for aesthetics all the time, but this is something that I thought was unacceptable because the mounting brackets are here. So then why wouldn't you put these, you know, terminal wires on the back? So then I could put this on a faceplate, you know. But what this is supposed to do, operating freight station, is that the load swings down and then when the train or whatever, you know, is there, you can flip it up to pretend it loaded into the train. That's located on the top section of track. It's a Pennsylvania station platform. I haven't figured out how to wire it, but I'm actually thinking about just leaving this on. I'll have to play around with it and then hooking up a switch to my actual terminals here. Really quick, I wanted to show you guys how I wired up the town lights. So there's two different ways to wire up things. There's a parallel or a series. So I'm not an electrician, I'm just a hobbyist, but this is my basic understanding. So basically, let's just say this, you have your just plus and minus, and we we'll call this your transformer. So basically a series is, you know, plus, and let's just call this a fixture. This is one bulb here. Then we go on to the next one. And here's a bulb here. Here's another bulb here. Whoops, sorry. We'll go out this way. And then we'll do one more. Why not? So we'll just make them weird. <laughs> so there you go. Basically, you just chain them together. So this, for the system I was using, did not work. And I was um, recently into the LED craze. I bought a bunch of these little uh, grain of wheat LEDs that had an anode and cathode on them. I tried chaining them together. They did not want to light up correctly. It was a pain in the butt. I could not figure it out. It was a nightmare. And then I decided to switch my lights to incandescent hobby lights, which were very expensive. They're from this German manufacturer that I picked up at a hobby store. I'm so thankful he had them there. But with those, I tried the series wiring as well. And as you guys know, with incandescents, they draw a lot more power. Um, so to say, I'm not going to get into the science of it, but they draw a lot more energy. So your bulbs become dimmer and dimmer as, as the series continues. So what I had to do with the incandescents is something called parallel wiring. And this is very interesting. I had to look it up as well. But my basic understanding is, let's say, here's your transformer. And we're going to do this. And this is how my garden's wired up. So you run your leads out. And every time you'd like to place a light, you use a splice. Okay, cool. And I'll put the lights in the middle so you guys won't get confused. So I'll color this in. Here's a splice. Here's a light. And then there's a splice. And I'll just draw a little bulb going out like that. All right, I want a bulb here. Okay, cool. Splice. And this is a parallel wiring scheme. Very basic. Like I said, I'm not an electrician. I'm not, a, uh, I'm not an engineer, just a hobbyist. And at the end, technically, whatever bulbs at the end doesn't really matter. And this basically, from my understanding, each bulb is, is receiving the same amount of power. And because it's AC, the current is ever-changing going through all the wiring here. So the bulbs I used are actually these little hobby lights here. And you get two little leads, these are tiny. I use these little splices you can pick up at a hardware store. And what you do is that you get your lead wire, let's just say we grab, yeah, this works. Um, you put your, let's just say this is a positive or negative or return cable. You snap this in place. Cool, all right. 
All right, let's just say brown is your return because I like to use green or darker colors as your return. You put this in this hole here. Then when you're, I'm not gonna actually do it. But when you're ready, I actually folded this over. I'll do that for you guys. I folded that over so there's no question of contact when you put this inside here. Whoops. Then you then push down on this. I'm not gonna do it because it'll actually cut into my green wire, which is still good. When that's all closed up, I'll actually take this out to show you guys what it should look like. And the cool thing is while you're running these leads for parallel series, this closes up. So you're not gonna fiddle with the wire too much. It's not gonna fall down until you clip it. So let's just say your green wire is going through and your wire that you would like to wire up is there. You close it and that's it. You're done. No soldering, um, no crimping needed. Sometimes you do need a pair of pliers to close these up if the uh, the cutting edge doesn't want to go through your wire. That's the best thing to do. So this system here is what's under my entire platform for my track. I believe my track's wired in parallel and all my lights for the town lights, not the Lionel lights. So these are all used as well. I used about, I want to say eight of these for the town. These burn really nice. Uh, these are meant to be used on 19 volts AC and they're also replaceable so you can do this. This is just a basic understanding of how I wired up things. It's not how a lot of people may wire up a garden. They might use a lot of terminals and such, but this is my basic understanding of the wiring and this is what I did underneath my platform. So my town wires actually start here. They go to my diner, underneath to these department stores here, underneath to the freight shed, which have, I believe they have two bulbs, then I shot up to the top for the little signal bridge there, the house, came back down here to go to my other trackside building there, back down here to the station, then the Lionel platform, then the end. The end literally looks like this. I just have two wires hanging there. So the terminal block will be mounted most likely under here like such, just to organize them so I don't have a giant clump of wires going everywhere. And as you can see, this is for the platform. And here's my two little adapters. We run until we find another one. Here's the actual little lamp wire. This platform is pre-lit, so I just ran two leads down. But that is the parallel wire system. As you can see, the wires are not in series. They are in a parallel, going all the way down and back around to, you might be able to actually see the two end wires in there somewhere. So we're actually going to move on now to hooking up the switches for the town lights and then moving on to other things inside the control system. If you guys are ever intimidated about wiring anything up on your own, always consult you know, other sources. Like I said, I'm just a hobbyist. This is what I've done in the past. Uh, the parallel wiring system was kind of new to me, but I've used it for the track and also my town lights. But anyways, let's dig inside this box and I'll show you what's going on in the inside of here. And really quick, it's uh, very simple so far. It will get filled up completely. So this is a Lionel 18 volt, 7.3 amp uh, power pack, which is usually meant for the controller systems or the commander systems. Um, I'm using it now as an accessory brick, which is what a lot of other uh, manufacturers will actually sell to power accessories, such as MTH has a whole power system for accessories, and they also have their own terminal block system, which looks awesome. So this will put out a ton of power. This will take the stress off of my MRC Pure Dual Power, which has an accessory out, but I noticed if you power anything out the accessory and run two trains at the same time with this amount of track, even this only being a 12 by four layout, it drains the power significantly. You can actually see these meters go crazy draws a ton of amperage. So I want to take the power off my transformer, even the other uh, CW transformer that's behind this box here, and use this power brick. So this is currently wired. The correct side is wired up to my terminal block here, which I'll show you guys right now. 
All right, so now we're inside the box. I'm gonna show you guys how to wire this up with first a distributor to get to the three different types of um, accessory panels. Like I said, I'm gonna have the intermittent buttons, I'm gonna have the town lights, and then the Lionel lights. So I'm gonna show you guys how I'm going to distribute that power out to other accessories and such. So first, I'm gonna start with the main block. And as you can see, I have this wire here coming off directly off the transformer and the other one's going to the switch. So this completes my switch, running another jump back to here. So right now, that means these screws, think of it as a line, like think of it as straight lines. So if I did this or that, these are just carrying the power from one screw head to the other. These are not connected in any sort, they just jump across. So what I would like to do is then distribute the power so I have, so to say, plus to plus to plus. Then you wanna go minus to minus to minus, just as a basic understanding. So how to do that is that you take these little jumpers I made previously, and you're going to do this. Let me make sure this one's loose. And I'll make sure the other one's loose. Sorry. All right, so what we're gonna do is take our jump here and go from the hot side. And these are kind of small, so you kind of have to squeeze these in. And do that. And I like color coding, like I said. So yellow is gonna mean hot. Green, in this case, will mean my return. And I might wire up the entire box like that or something similar to that. And here's my return side. I actually have to pinch these a little bit to get them under the, the screw. This one's being finicky. Actually, I may have to raise up. There we go. So now we're in that one. And I wanna go here. So I've now distributed my power across one set of leads. So now I have positive, negative, positive, negative. See how it works? You're just moving the power over. Like I said, these are not connected to each other in this fashion. They're only gonna be across or vertically attached. So if I take up these screws, there's actually a little plate that connects these together. And this is only distributing my power. So what I like to do again is take another set of jumps and go under what I just did. And you can actually wire these up to be a triple, which I might end up doing to make it easier for you guys to see. And also this terminal is actually very busy. So what I'm gonna do is wire up a triple by putting two different ends into one, and then I'll be right back. Really quick, I'll show you guys how to actually crimp one of these. You strip the end, and you wanna put that in here. See a little bit of wire sticking out. You wanna level it up so your ends match, you know what I mean, so you're not, you know, one's not like that. It'll be really annoying trying to put it up to your uh, power strip or your terminal brick. So you line up red with red on the end, and you squeeze. And sometimes you have to do a little bit more on the end, and you're good. So these aren't going anywhere. Now I have to do this side here. You just take one of these, and you can buy these at your local hardware shops. I got these at the local Home Depot. They're relatively inexpensive. Um, you used to be able to buy these all over the place, like Radio Shacks and all that, but fortunately a lot of those stores have gone, and you can buy a lot of this stuff online, but it's good to see it in person if you can, instead of doing an Amazon, because I've been burned on some cheaper electronic components. So here's a triple, and really quick, we're gonna put that here. So I actually have to squeeze these a little bit. And once you crimp them, unfortunately, you can't reuse them because the inside actually crimps onto the wire. So just unfortunately how that rolls. Let's see, there's one, and go to the other one. <laughs> that would've been really bad. Um, you have to loosen this one up. 
I'm going to do the same thing with the yellow. I just thought it'd be helpful to show you guys how to do that if you're new to this. And there we go. So now I have a triple. Instead of taking two singles, which would take up twice as much space, I now have a triple. So I'm actually going to do the same thing with the yellow and put that from here to every other one on there. So that gives me, like I said, three. So I now have a main power brick, so to say, because then this goes to my on off switch, which basically energizes all my leads here. So now I can either plug in three things or two different things or even just one thing if I really wanted to. But we're gonna use, I believe we're gonna have to use all three leads because I'm gonna have to power my push button accessories which will be going through this previously made mess of a terminal block that I did many, many years ago. And it's really not as bad. Instead of doing triples, this is what it'd look like if you did singles. So now, you, like I said, you have twice as much going through here compared to, look at this, it's so clean, compared to this mess. These are my uh, main leads in, and then after that was just, holy moly, I can't believe I built this. <laughs> so we have upgraded, but anyways, we're gonna go from here, and we're gonna power up our town lights. So I'm then going to take a lead off of here and go from there. All right, so these are my two leads for my town lights. So I'd like to wire them up to one of my switches. And to make it easier, I'm going to use a switch that is already installed. So I apologize if the order of these switches on the outside were changed up, but for now they're going to be the bottom switches because they are already here. So what I like to do is connect one of these ends, one of the leads after I untangle them. Let's see, because I really want to keep these wires as clean as possible. So let me just take this here. And this is my return wire, supposedly. It doesn't really matter because it, it's AC. And they are in parallel. So what we're gonna do is actually hook this up to this switch here. And I did magnetize this screwdriver. I kind of regret it sometimes, but it's very helpful if you're working with models with smaller pieces. But anyways, there we go. So that's installed. And this is away from everything. And what I'll do at the end is actually organize all the wires into a grouping, almost like a snake. Um, all right, so the next wire to go would be a jumper from here to my power source. And actually I can connect this end. We're gonna keep it color coded here as best as we can keep it color coded. All right, I had to bend that. And this lead can go right here. It's gonna look like a spaghetti mess when we're done, but at least it'll be very organized and everything will be nice and color coded. So if there is a problem, we can get in here and kind of decipher things. I'm gonna try my best to make it not look like a spaghetti mess. Kind of a pet peeve of mine, especially being in the music industry. Um, I always hated wiring up studios that were a mess or even just wiring up something in the basement to play some music. All right, so that's in. We're now going to make a jumper to go from this green terminal back to here, and then we'll have a completed light circuit. And for these, we can just kind of measure it out. So what I like doing is touching here where it's gonna go and where it has to go. Don't leave too much slack because it'll just become a mess, but you want it to come out like that and go like that. There we go. And these are great. If you guys don't have these, definitely pick up one of these. It's a multi-tool, you can actually cut Smaller set screws with this. You can you have wire cutters, wire strippers, also your crimping ends. You can just see how much I've used these over the years. All right, put this over here. And I'm gonna strip these ends. And this is 18 gauge. According to the tool here, it's 18 gauge wire, or it strips on 18 gauge. And this is all from Atlas. And we're gonna connect this here underneath. Let me squeeze these in. And a better crimp, uh, crimp connect for this would actually be an O rather than the U shape. So these really hold on and these screws won't let go of it. I have some of those, but I'm saving those for things that are more permanent, so to say, not as modular as this box. Uh, I'm gonna have to use a smaller screwdriver to get in here. All right, we're gonna do a test run, see if our lights are working. 
I never wire stuff while anything's hot so you don't blow anything out. You never know, even though it is a, uh, you know, a hobby transformer, you don't want to blow up anything or short anything and arc burn. I know it sounds kind of crazy, but it's happened. So we're turn on our transformer. Then I'm going to turn on the master power switch and then our switch. And yes, we do have lights. So guys, check this out. This looks awesome. So they're burning bright. They are burning around 18 volts. And let me raise the camera up so you guys can see all the other lights. This building is actually a pre-lit building from Lionel. So we're gonna move on. I'm gonna turn off everything. And we're gonna move on to wiring up some of our other accessories. So while I was thinking about how to wire up uh, some other accessories, I thought I can now put this beacon and also my Lionel billboard, which is on top of the hill there with the uh, Jocko Gym. I can actually wire those up to my parallel wiring circuit for the town lights. Um, originally, I could not do this because of the um, other wiring issues I had and not enough power coming off of the MRC. But now that I have the Lionel power brick, I can now wire that in the same circuit which is interesting because now that frees up one of the sides on here to be for the accessory run out. So it's just little things like this when you're building something, you may think of something, just write it down quick so you don't forget. Uh, I actually wrote it in the notebook. So we're going to continue with that. I'm gonna wire up that up there and also that, and most likely my MTH platform up there, the Pensy platform, will probably be in that circuit as well once I figure out how to wire up the uh, jumble mess switch that it came with. So we're gonna go to that. I'll show you guys how to easily use those little uh, terminal blocks. And some of them in this container are blue, some of them are red, but we'll get to that and I'll show you guys at least how to wire up the beacon. All right guys, so underneath the table right now, and it's actually much harder to work with these blue clips compared to the red clips that you can see up here um, these are very finicky. I mean, it doesn't look as clean either, but what you're supposed to do is actually crimp the wire you'd like to go onto with it and see if this works. If it doesn't work, it's going to be really bad. Um, you can actually use the crimpers to close this off. And if it, if it doesn't work, it's going to be a mess under here. Um, unfortunately, this is all I have right now. Yeah. I mean, these are not working properly. So let me see if I can get this to even crimp on there. Yeah, that's actually in there. So let's see if I can get this closed. And this usually requires a pair of pliers or such. <clears throat> that's not going for some reason. Let me actually try to use the crimpers to close this up. That's not very pretty, but I think we may have a connection there. And like I said, compare that to the other wiring system I've been using, much different, very different. So I'm gonna hook up the other one and I'm gonna run power to it and see if it clicks on. All right guys, it appears that our Lionel signal beacon is lit. So those two little uh, crimps there, those little connectors seem to work. Uh, this one is actually a heat activated beacon. It's not the uh, electromagnetic version that came out much later. This one's from the early 50s. The heat actually is generated by the bulb. There's a dimple on top and there's a pin that rotates um, with the globe. So this uses a heat source rather than electromechanical source. So next I'm actually going to wire up the Jocko Gym sign with the Lionelville. It, it changes between the two. I'm going to wire that up one thing about this accessory, it does require the full 18 volts AC. So if it's switching on and off sporadically, once that um, little internal switch heats up like a blinker almost, I'm afraid that my other town lights may blink. So if that's the, uh, if that's the issue at hand, I'm going to have to wire that on a separate circuit, which will be on the same circuit as my other Lionel lit accessories. All right guys, so the Lionelville sign in the Jocko Gym is going crazy right now. It's getting tons of power from the power brick. And my beacon is also slowly spinning. I bumped into the table, so it kind of threw it off the axis a little bit. But it appears like this sign is on a program. It runs a few times and shuts off. 
then does it again. So I don't know if I'm gonna keep this on all the time. It actually has a switch underneath. You can turn it off like a little dip switch. So I might do that for when I'm doing like live streams and such. And then when I get running the trains, I'll turn it on. But it is an awesome piece. I'm so glad to have it. Next, I'm going to try to figure out how to wire up the lights for my other accessories, such as that um, signal tower and the newsstand under the red roof there. All right, guys, so we're now officially wiring up accessories on the layout. It's very exciting. It's just been a couple days of filming up here, and it's been a lot of fun doing this for you guys. So how this works is that we have three poles here. And these posts are all hooked up to the model. This is actually another, don't worry about this post. It does not have a terminal. So pretend it does not exist, but technically it is on the ground circuit. So you can trace this black wire here, and this is hooked up to this post. And this is the hot for the light. You can actually see the light bulb base right here. We flip her around. I keep my thumb on this so I can tell where I'm at. All right, so you can actually see it easily here. This black wire is right here for the light. And the way this works is that this plate, anything mounted to this plate is officially on the ground circuit. So we can trace that back to underneath here, which would be right here. So this is our ground circuit right here, which is very important to keep in, keep in mind. So when we flip her back, that means this pole here is the hot side for the solenoid, which is the activator circuit, the circuit that lets this guy move back and forth. So we don't wanna wire up to this yet, we just wanna keep these two in mind. So we're gonna do that first, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to run two wires off our main power strip here, run that underneath the platform, hooking up to my previously made terminal block. And like I said, this is a very nasty version compared to this nice and clean uh, 2020 version compared to probably 2005 right here. So we're going to take those two wires and then hook them up to this with one on the light circuit, the light hot, and then the official or universal ground circuit. When it comes time to the activator circuit, I'll then show you guys how to wire that up separately, but it's extremely easy. Also, I'm going to wire up this side of the circuit for our accessory lights and accessories, technically the accessory terminal for this guy. I'm gonna actually put it through one of our switches here, which I have already unboxed. So I already showed you guys how to wire up switches. So if you see that in the circuit here, when I come back, uh, don't be alarmed. I didn't do anything too crazy. I'm just putting a switch, basically running a wire up to the panel, then running one back. So we're gonna do that. So basically I can turn on and off the lights if I don't want to use them or I just want to run some trains without the lights on, I can do that. Alrighty, really quick, I wanted to show you guys what I did so it's not that confusing. So I now have this switch up here. Move the camera there. I now have this switch that's hooked up to this terminal here at the last one. And I used the same colors. I just ran a hot and then ran a green for the return going right into that power strip. So this is what this would look like. It's kind of sloppy, like I said. But the good thing is I can run all of our accessories here so it look nice and clean. So this is just hooked up to two wires and you can actually trace them all the way, all the way back and get this out of here. You can trace them all the way back to the switch and the terminal block inside our control box there. So I'm now going to run this underneath and go under there and going to wire up all the accessories. All right, so we have lights. So that means this whole little circuit here worked. And just really quick, I'll show you guys what the terminal looks like down here in the dark. Bring it out to the light. So we have our power in, which means this whole thing's energized now, like positive, negative, positive, so on. This is going up to the signal tower. So this worked out really well. So now that we have the lights going to this, which means we have the hot side here, runs to the light. Then this is the return side here, which runs up to that whole plate. So what we're gonna do now is run a wire from here. We're gonna twist two of them together and then put them through this uh, little crimp here. It's gonna be kind of tight, but we can do it. So we're gonna run that all the way underneath, back around through one of these holes. We don't wanna forget that because then it'll make more work for us in the end for one of the doorbell switches. Then we're gonna take the other wire coming off the doorbell, go back underneath to here, up on the model here. And in theory, we push the button, this accessory should work. And now it's two separate circuits. Well, one, one circuit operating two different functions. 
So we're gonna get to that and I'll show you guys the end result. All right, so the signal tower is all wired up. I grouped, I just spun this around. I actually grouped the yellow and blue wire here. Then this is another blue wire here for the um, other side of the circuit. This goes to the solenoid coil and this is my main power in. This actually works really well. I'll flip this over. I'll show you guys really quick of what this does. And I'll go over here so you guys can see the switch. And I couldn't use the crimps here. It was just too much, um, too much bulk. It wouldn't close up on the panel. So let's do this. So you just see it over there in the frame. So I'm gonna move on to the newspaper stand. Same exact wiring, so I won't show you guys that. And then after that, we're gonna wire up the ice station, which is up on top of the hill there. And then after that is just a couple other um, smaller switches, and then pretty much this is all wired up. So this is the inside of the newsstand. You can see it's got an integrated circuit card there, and they label it out for you, and it's actually very easy to see. This is called B. You can see it there, and you flip it over, and there's B. And you can see I've actually made a jump. I'm going to take this out, and this is for when I had it on the other layout. I wanted the lights to come on the same time I pushed the button. So these are my two power for the horn, and this is the light circuit. Originally, this is supposed to sound like a horn, but it's kind of weird. So I actually have another one that's a whistle that's a little bit older. And there are panels in here. It looked like there's like a there's like a news scene going on, some facade in there, so you won't see all the electronics. So I'm gonna wire this up and I'll show you guys when we're all done. Alright, so the newsstand's all wired up and it's honking away. So you can see it, it's back there, that bright light behind the station. And this is the sound of that uh, horn. So it's really ugly. Um, I might switch it out for the whistle over time, just swap them up, change it up. But the uh, next thing to wire up is very simple. It's going to be the ice station all the way at the top, the Lionel icing station. So how that's going to work, you basically just run one wire off of our terminal block. It's going to be run from the terminal block there up to the accessory, run another one back to one of my push button switches, and then after that, run it back to the terminal block to complete the circuit. And I'm going to have that on one of these doorbell buttons as well. So when that's all done, I'll give you guys a look of what I did wiring wise and we're going to test it out. So guys, we're now under the platform and the ice station is probably the easiest accessory uh, so far to wire. I believe the milking track is going to be even easier and I'll explain that in a few minutes. But basically, let's trace our wires here. So I have them hooked on this little eye hook here and we're going to trace it. And basically, we're going to go down to our power terminal, terminal block here, then this wire is being sent to the panel, which is just a switch, then that wire comes back, which is this wire here, back to the accessory. So what that's going to do, it's going to open and close the circuit, which will allow our icing station to work. So let's go test it out. All right, so let's see if it's going to work. Here's the third switch down. Let's give that a press. And there we go, we're dumping ice on the track. The next accessory to go is the milking station here. And that's not a milk car, it's just a refrigerator car that actually coincides with the icing station. So this already has two wires hanging below the track. Now I built this prior to acquiring one of these. So um, I thought it'd be really cool to build one. And the easiest way to wire this up because it's using track power is basically to just connect two splices to my control panel here and it's going to use track power, so I don't need to wire it up to any of the terminal blocks. I don't need to power this with anything with this. It's just a switch. So I'll show you guys that in a few minutes. All right, so my accessory track there with the milk car is all wired up. So I'm going to give it some track power. And I got the 624 CNO back there humming away. So that's not the accessory doing that. Wow, it looks it works great. So that concludes everything I would like to wire on here for accessories. I do have uh, an empty switch here for cutting out the track up there and also another one here for possibly cutting out the track to this little um, service here. But I'm actually going to not do that down here because I realize it's all ballasted in and looks great. So I won't mess with that. But up top, it is still a rough track off that switch. So I'll let you guys know what I do with that next. So I'm going to go to final assembly. I'm going to get everything all uh, attached here and looking pretty. I'm gonna put my switches in the face here. And then after that, I'm going to label everything and uh, then conclude the video. All right, guys, for 
now the box is completed. I'm going to do another part. So this is part one of the box video. As you can see on the inside, I cleaned up a lot of the wiring using these loops here that's screwed to the frame. And I wanted enough space and ventilation for the power brick. And the Lionel power brick thankfully has a circuit breaker, seven amp circuit breaker and an on off switch. So if I don't wanna use it and it's plugged in, I can just reach behind and turn it off or use my master switch up here. But it's great to know that this is protected. Um, on the inside here, I also used a loop down here to send all the wiring out. So when this is down, this actually looks really clean. Look at that. And it should sit flatter than that. One of the wires are sticking out on the back. But this will be the control center. And when I built this thing, I actually made it high enough so that I can fit the power system underneath. Have a little bit of vent here so air can move freely. And on the front here, I actually ended up labeling everything. So signal, whistle, ice, milk station, accessory, town power, and power. So when that switched on, the nice red lights up and running. I also labeled my tracks while I was here. So this is, like I said, part one of two. Part two is going to cover the rewiring of this switch here, the Lionel accessory track. And then also what I'm going to do with these. So it's a mystery. Also, in a future video, I'm going to show you guys how I built this awesome free-floating train rack for mostly motive power, just so they can be displayed, and cabooses. But I would like to thank you guys for joining me in this video. I hope to post more things this week. And also, like I said earlier, I'm starting to go live every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And that's for train talk and running trains all across the layout. Um, all this stuff will be cleaned up, and I hope to get to a lot of the scenery on the layout this week as well. Uh, if you guys are new to the channel, please uh, subscribe and join us uh, whenever you can. And I hope to hear from you guys soon in future videos. Thank you so much.